All right, finishing up with Lord Christopher Monckton. This is a very positive thing I see happening to have the former British Prime Minister who signed England, the, the UK, into the European Union, which is completely tyrannical now. Most of the countries were brought in without a vote, just like England. And, and now I've seen polls of 85 or more percent, some as high as 90, wanting out of it. And all its taxes and regulations and the rest of it. Uh, they have uh, members from the UK in the parliament, but it has no authority. Uh, as uh, members of uh, UKIP have come on, like Nigel Farage and others. So it is just absolutely stunning uh, that it has come to this point. And uh, our government's been signing deals with the EU to start doing trade deals. This is how they get rid of... Of your sovereignty. So so in closing, Lord Monkin, it's always darkest till the dawn, or you don't know what you have till it's gone. I mean, it always takes tyranny getting bad before people wake up. Is England starting to have its Neville Chamberlain moment, or will that come later? Uh, because if there's now open discussions of just getting out of it entirely and, and calling it undemocratic by people like John Major, uh, this has got to show there's a big wake-up call happening. That's absolutely right. It's very interesting how the media are beginning to break on this. The BBC, of course, is part of the Marxist sort of fascist conspiracy. They um, will not uh, ever represent the British people's view on this issue. They won't tell you what's really going on in Europe. To them, it's, you know, it's socialism writ large, and they love it. But the Daily Telegraph, the Times even... Uh, to some extent, the Financial Times, certainly the Daily Mail and the Daily Express, which are uh, the big kind of medium quality but big circulation papers, they are now very, very strongly against having anything further to do with the European Union. And so, gradually, the papers and the people are lining up and they're saying, no, we want our freedom back, we want our democracy back, we don't want the European currency, we don't want European tyranny, we want to elect the people who make our laws and we don't want any laws imposed on us unless the people we elect have said that those laws should be inflicted upon us. And that is the big change which we are now increasingly demanding. UKIP is now being listened to with widespread respect on this issue because we have been saying for years that this day would come, that people would once again want their freedom back. And your voice, Alex, is a very important one in this. People will say, oh, but he's terribly extreme. But on the other hand, on issues like this, you are in the mainstream of public opinion. The mainstream of public opinion says enough is enough, democracy is what we want, and we're going to have it, and it's just a matter of time now well, for the entire present political class, certainly in the UK, and I think in, in the United States too, is swept away and replaced by people who remember what your constitution was for. It was so that no law could be made except by people that you elected to make it. That's what we're going to have to get back to, and from my point of view, and I think from yours, Alex, the sooner the better. Absolutely. Here's my final question for you. Well, it's a two-parter. Where do you see this fight going in the future, uh, the way the, you know, the ships are basically you know, beginning to get into battle formation, and, and you know, now there's actually opposition really starting to, to form for every action. There's an equal and opposite uh, reaction. A... Uh, and uh, B, uh, you were bringing up the fact that, you know, that I'm in the mainstream on this issue. I mean, I really find common sense is always in the mainstream. It's just ignored until the damage from not following common sense uh, becomes so great. But th they've always said we're the minority and we're crazy, not believing their man-made global warming when the facts have been out forever. So I just think it's stick to it, tell the truth. And, and, and if you stand up against the lie and don't stop, you, you will always end up beating it. I think two things are going to happen now. First of all, uh, gradually in Britain, UKIP is going to become seen widely as respectable. That's already very largely happened. It's going to happen much more rapidly from here on. And it's, it's that air of respectability, of no longer being an unconsidered whining fringe, that will make the difference, I think, in Britain and start leading to us beginning to capture parliamentary seats. That's thing number one. But thing number two, I think what is going to happen is that people are gradually going to try and insulate themselves from 
uh, their governing class. They're going to start running their own independent, privately run currencies. I'm already working on this at the moment. Um, and the idea here is that we issue a currency which is not printed or minted, so you can't fall foul of the law there. It's purely electronic. But it can't inflate because it will be fully backed by assets. I'm not going to bore you with the technicalities, but what I'm really saying is that what is gradually happening here is that people are saying we can no longer trust the government to do things for us, like making foreign treaties or issuing currencies. So we are going to start doing this for ourselves and increasingly cut the government out of our planning and our thinking and our hopes because the governing class is clearly no longer in touch with the people it is nominally in charge of. That's the interesting thing about John Major's defection to the truth. He was the arch-architect of Britain's membership of the European Union. Before that, it was just the European Why Union. Why is he doing this? I mean, is it that the power structure in England realizes they've been double-crossed, or is it because he wants to get his soul back, or because he's getting so much pressure, or a combination? I, I think it's probably because, because no longer being in office, he's no longer being constantly bullied by civil servants who think Europe is wonderful in the way that David Cameron is. Civil service is very, very smooth and very, very powerful in Britain. And it's also now, I think, the biggest obstacle to uh, progress towards freedom that Britain has. And David Cameron is enmeshed in that. He is a bureaucrat's bureaucrat in just the same way that John Major was when he was in office. The difference is that now that John Major is out of office and has been out of it long enough, he is no longer constantly being whispered at by these people who want to enhance the power of the corporatist dictatorship at the expense of the people. And so he's begun to rediscover the joys of freedom. It is, I mean, you're quite right. This bellwether, that's what he is, is leading the way towards other members of the governing class. Lord Hesketh is, Lord Hesketh is just one among them who are leaving the sinking ship of corporatist, fascist, socialist, communist, call it what you like, but it's tyranny, whichever way you stack it. They, they now realize this doesn't work. It's not going to give them the power and the wealth that they crave. It's going to turn Britain into a banana monarchy without any bananas and soon without <laughs> a monarchy. Well, that was my yeah. final point, is that that's what yeah. tyranny always does. It works at first, like a cancer running through the body, but then it kills the host. And, I mean, they've got to know... I mean, Europe is delusional. The same thing Hitler did, uh, many others, Napoleon. They start thinking they're invincible. So they set up a system, as I've seen some European engineers admit 30 years ago, was meant to bring countries into receivership. But the imploding of those countries through overtaxation regulation then implodes the overall structure that even the bureaucrats and, and, and the insiders sit upon. And so they're well, going good. This is goody. a very dangerous moment, Alex, because it could go one of two ways, and it, it would be very difficult to predict which way it's going to go. One thing that could happen is that Britain gets out of Europe, other countries realize they don't want to be in it either, and the whole thing collapses into a, a narrow, putrish, inward looking. And body. England could lead the way. I mean, if England leaves, that's it, everybody else is going to. Exactly, and we can hope for that. But the other danger is that those who had waited for and planned for the financial collapse of the Eurozone so that they could then say the only way out is dictatorship. They are still in the ascendant. David Cameron belongs to that group. Nick Clegg belongs no, to that group. No, that's what I'm saying. They think the crisis will lead them to total power, but I see it destroying them in the end because they've been so good at wrecking things. It's, it's like the greenies. The danger is, the danger is that... <laughs> they will get away with imposing this dictatorship before it collapses. And of course it will still eventually collapse. And the more nasty and intrusive the dictatorship becomes, the more unpopular it will become, the more unsustainable it will become. And that is something which these arrogant little so-and-sos in government tend to forget. One of the most refreshing things about being part of Margaret Thatcher's administration, I was a very junior cog in it, but I was in there right at her side, if you like, in 10 Downing Street, was that that was a government that was always very conscious that it was only there for a time, it was there to do good by the people, and it was there to bring back freedom and put back wealth into people's pockets and take it away from the state. That was what we were all about, and no government in Britain since has really tried to do that. But once again, we're going to have to get back and to that. And she said she was an enemy of the Bilderberg Group. 
Well, she was an enemy of all these instinctual fascists, these people who think that the great and the good are wiser than the rest of us, and they should be allowed to govern in our name, whether with or without our consent. Those days, I hope, are now done, and I hope that in Britain and in Europe, we will get our democracy back, because if we don't, America will be next. All right, Lord Monkton, we're out of time. I appreciate the time. Science of Public Policy dot uh, org. I just wanted to point out here in closing to you that you, know, you said the danger is total dictatorship. All the greenies I see are in the news like it's normal saying green dictatorship. Do it whether people like it or not. And I hear locals in Austin saying we're going to do this one way or the other. It has nothing to do with the environment. It's their the new color of fascism is green. Lord Moncton, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, too. And as always, God bless America. Well, God bless you over there as well, and I hope you can retain your sovereignty. You know, England could lead the way out of the European Union dictatorship. Again, thank you, uh, Lord Moncton. All right. We're